What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel today. We're going to talk about superchargers or turbochargers, kind of like this guy back here. So which one is right for you? Well, over the past couple of weeks, I've actually been getting a lot of comments. Which one is right for me? Today's video, we're going to hopefully be able to answer that, help you out. Let's have a talk. Let's have a discussion. Let's go. Okay, so mostly what I try to do on the channel is try to entertain. Well, we like to have fun drag racing and building cars and motorcycles and doing all that stuff. Sometimes when I sit down and make a, try to make a professional video like this, it doesn't always translate that well. So we're going to give it a shot. But before we get into today's discuss, see, I'm already tongue tied. I'm already, I'm already failing. Before we get into today's discussion about which one is right for me, supercharger versus turbo, we need to understand how each one of them works. It's very important because well, there's a bunch of different options out there. So which one is right for you will really depend on how you want the power delivered. So let's talk about it. This is going to be fun. All right. So obviously I suck at drawing. This is, I don't even know. This is, Lord, Lord help me. What the fuck? Intercooler there. This is going up into the intake manifold and we'll get through it, but get your mind out of the gutter over here. I know exactly what you're thinking. Stop it. Dude, dude, let's back it up. Golly, that looks just like a It's supposed to be a belt. This is supposed to be exhaust manifold and that's supposed to be the intake there. Just to clear the air. The way a supercharger works, it is belt driven. And we are missing something pretty dramatic here. I've completely forgot. And that is, let's just extend. It doesn't, wow, that looks so much worse. It's not even funny. I'm seriously not trying to draw something provocative, but the way that a supercharger works inside of the, the housing itself, you have two screws. They can turn inwards or outwards. We kind of understand how superchargers work and anyway, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Let's just, uh, let's, okay, you know what? Let's get past the supercharger. Let's focus on the turbo. That's uh, a big one here, so. So some kind of a turbo here. So the this, let's just go to my car. Oh gosh, help me. <laughs> I have a twin turbo car, so we're gonna show you how this works. Seems easy enough in drawing things that look silly and nobody can understand, so anyway. My car, if you have not seen it yet, is a twin turbo car. So this is the way this works, all right? So turbocharger is completely different. So we have our charge pipe that goes down to the intercooler, which is right in front of you there. And then off to each side on the bottom, it goes back towards the compressor side of the turbo. This is a low mid-mount system, lives underneath of the car. But the way that it works is that it's exhaust driven. So where the supercharger is belt driven, the turbo is completely exhaust driven by RPM. Now we've all heard of turbo lag. Turbo lag is a thing, depending on the size of the turbos you go with. Do you want a big single turbo? Do you want twin turbo? How do you want it? The way that it works though, it's exhaust driven. It's free horsepower. That's the difference between a supercharger. Supercharger is belt driven and it actually takes horsepower to spin that blower. So you're in effect losing power. Exhaust gases leave the engine, they spin the turbines, which are connected through a shaft to another turbine in the compressor housing, which forces air through the cold side piping up into the intercooler, through the charge pipe into the intake manifold itself. And that is how you gain horsepower in a turbo car. <laughs> All right, so pros, pros for a supercharger. There's a bunch of them, pretty reliable setup. That's gonna be probably everybody's first pick. A supercharger is generally more reliable than a turbocharger. We'll get into that in a little bit. You get more of an instantaneous feel on the street. As soon as you go into the throttle, you're pretty much under boost. It is belt driven, depending on the size of the pulley that you decide to go with your target horsepower goal. Most will tell you that a supercharger is more fun for a street car. The install is also something that is a significant pro. Basically replaces your intake manifold relocate some vacuum lines and bolt everything down you're pretty much good to go you don't have to change exhaust headers or this or that or whatever you can knock out a supercharger install in probably eight to ten hours if you're moving pretty quickly cost is also a big benefit here to get into a supercharger is generally a lot cheaper than a turbocharged system and by cheaper i mean it could be thousands of dollars <laughs> but what about the cons well, there's also a lot of those too. With a supercharger, you are going to be significantly limited as far as upgradability, 
power everything. Why in the world would that be? Well, there's a lot that goes into this. So we're going to break it down just a little bit and go over some of the biggest things that you guys are going to have questions about. So um, you're going to be limited by boost. And what I mean by that is pulleys. You may not have a ton of them around. They are expensive. It's an added cost. So to get into a supercharger, it is generally cheaper. Yes. But as soon as you start messing around with pulleys and combining uppers and lowers in different sizes, the cost can drive uh, up significantly. Acceleration can be a con as well. Yes, they are fun on the street, but uh, when you go big power, yes, people are gonna say, well, depends on how you drive. Yes, that is true. But let's pretend you are like me and you like to have fun on the street a lot. So make sure you have a good tire. Superchargers generally create a whole lot of heat. There's things are always spinning. They're right on top of the engine. It's just naturally in a hot spot. On the street, you're gonna suffer a little bit, but on the track, you'll suffer even more. There's ways to bring those IATs down, your intake air temperatures, uh, things like ice coolers in the back, different combinations of this and that. There's ways around it, but that also drives up cost. So to make a supercharger perform like a turbo car, it could cost you more in the long run. In my opinion, my humble opinion, the biggest con to a supercharger is its upgradability. In the beginning, I was looking at a supercharger for this car back here. And I was looking at Etta Brox, Whipples, you know, they're all proven, they've been out for a long time, right? But uh, what stage did I want to go into? Do I want stage one? Do I want a tuner kit? Stage two, this, that, and the other. Do I want a six rib? Do I want an eight rib? Do I want a 10 rib? Just depending on what brand you go with. So there again is added cost. All said and done, this supercharger that I bought into pretty cheap, uh, really, really adds up to the price of a good entry or mid-level turbo system that has a much higher ceiling as far as performance. Because again, with a supercharger, you can only go down in pulley size, but so much, and then you're gonna get capped. There's things that you can do to up the power. You can run different fuels, E85 fuel systems, this, that, and the other. We can talk about it for days, but long story short, you will reach a ceiling a lot faster with a supercharger versus a turbo car. Now, when it comes to turbos, there's a lot of different options out there, depending on the size you go with. Most people with these new Coyote Mustangs go with like a twin 62-66. Seems to be a very popular choice. They hit hard. They're good for a thousand horsepower all day long. In my case, I went a little bit bigger. I went with twin 64-67s from Comp. It's a Hell Horse Performance Kit and performs very well. Rated for somewhere in a ballpark of like 1600 wheel. It'll take a built motor and all that to utilize all that power. But the cool thing is that there's no stage one, stage two kit to buy. We have all the power, all the turbo that I would ever want. So what about the feeling on the street? How daily drivable friendly is it? But I can tell you from experience, they are arguably easier to drive on the street than a supercharged car. The reason being is, especially when you have like a boost controller like I've got, you can turn them up and you can turn them down. Gate pressure for me, seven pound springs, E85 fuel system is around 700 horsepower. So still pretty significant, but with a boost controller, we can pretty much double that spring pressure on demand. We don't have to stop, go back to the garage, change a pulley, do any of that. We just simply hit a button. Biggest benefit I can say to a turbo car is the adjustability and why I decided to go with one. There's no stage one, stage two, stage three, stage 19 and a half, kits to buy, whatever, right? Tons of power, tons of torque. That's something we haven't touched on yet. Boost for boost, a turbo car will beat out. And what I mean beat out, I mean simply that it's going to make more horsepower and torque than a supercharged car will all day long every day of the week, twice on Sunday. And often, most cases, a little bit more power is just a push of a button away. But that's not to say that turbos are without cons and there's a bunch. Vacuum leaks, boost leaks, I've been through a couple of those issues myself. The cost to get into a turbo system is generally a lot higher. It can be significant depending on how crazy you want to go with it. Lots of different choices, upgrades, things like that will drive the price up significantly. But like I said, there's a higher, a much higher ceiling with the turbo kits versus a supercharger. You don't have to deal with heat or any of that stuff, especially when you go with like a mid-mount system like I've got, which we've talked about already a couple of times in this video. The drivability between the two cars, 
I think that the turbo car is just as much fun on the street as a supercharged car. They feel completely different. Even auto versus manual, it's insane, it's intoxicating. You can't really beat it. So to wrap up this video, that's kind of what we need to, to talk about is your decision, kind of like me. I, in the beginning, I wanted to go supercharger because I wanted something a little bit maybe more reliable and street friendly. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to go fast and then we went turbo. So we made that hard decision. We spent a little bit more money doing so, but I would make the same choice over and over and over because of the adjustability. Do you want to be stuck? Do you want to be handicapped without spending a whole lot of money? Or do you want to just buy into the system and have the almost infinite adjustability that you can gain from these turbo cars? These days, it's crazy. That's really where I think we're going to leave this video is uh, we've talked about the pros and cons to both systems. They're both great in their own way. They're also they're also both kind of limited and bad in their own way. But yeah, higher cost, more maintenance possibly with the turbo car, but you gain much more of a ceiling as far as horsepower and torque. Um, and uh, even things like, uh, you know, leaving with a converter on the drag strip. <laughs> Things like two steps will put you in a boost so that pretty much eliminates any turbo lag if you're racing with a supercharger yes you're going to get more of an instantaneous feel given the design but you are going to be limited on the top end and you're going to have to spend more money possibly down the road to upgrade that system let me know in the comments how you feel about both of these and uh, hopefully this video was able to maybe give you some insight on which direction you want to go. I know you probably watch this and still go do tons of research. And I encourage that because that's exactly what I would do too. So yeah. All right. We're done. That's it. That's the video. Hope you had fun. Hope you learned something. Gives you something to think about. Let me know in the comments what you think. But until next video, take care. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.